Welcome back everyone, this is Travis here with Fisher Hex. In today's video we're going to be doing a par reading and light adjustment on the frag tank using the Sennai Reef. So let's go ahead and get into it. As I mentioned previously, I purchased this Sennai Reef from a friend locally. Now, since I only intend to use it for the par reading, I really didn't have any use for it to buy it retail. Now the retail uh, comes with the one month of ammonium pH, which I wasn't even going to use. So spend $200 or get it from a friend locally here who didn't have the tabs, which is totally fine. And I saved a ton of money. So it was really a no brainer at the end of the day. With that being said, my current lighting over the reef tank is an Alcamars fixture with an SB Reef Light PCB board replacement. Now, I needed to get a baseline of par before making any adjustments to the light, so the first thing I did is I went ahead and measured approximately 3 inches underneath the light, worked my way down to the surface area of the frag tank, and then got underneath the surface and then moved around within the frag tank, getting uh, different uh, par readings and, and notating what those par readings were. Now I noticed that my power readings in general were pretty low, particularly on the far left and right hand side of the frag tank. Now given that the light fixture has to be up pretty high to get even the light spread uh, somewhat evenly over the frag tank, uh, it's no wonder that uh, those acropores are just not doing well on the far left side because the power reading was actually down to about 92, which is just not acceptable for acropora. No species of acropora is going to do well in 92 par, at least not one that I know of. So with this new information, there's a couple things I can do to increase growth and coloration within the frag system. Now the first thing I want to do is increase light intensity. What I did is I took the Sennai Reef, I put it in the middle of the frag tank directly underneath the light, left it there, and I increased the intensity slowly, uh, getting it in a range that I was looking for. Now what is that range? Boy, if you go on the forums and type what is the recommended par range for SBS Coral, you'll get from 200 to 800, from 400 to 900. These are so many. I have seen in the past with not only my system but other systems, I try to keep it between 450 and 700. That seems to be the sweet spot in my particular situation and the way I like to keep my nutrients. Now, every system is going to be different. What you want to do is you want to make adjustments, see how the corals react, and then continue to make adjustments from there. With that being said, I went ahead and I adjusted the par output to a range that I felt was appropriate. Now, I'm getting approximately 550 to 600 par in the middle of the frag tank. As I work my way out, it does drop, but I'm only getting down to about 250, 300 where I was originally getting that 92, so I'm definitely happy with that. The next thing I can do with this information is go ahead and reposition my coral based on their given par needs. Now what I'm going to do is consolidate my acropora and my montipora in the center of the frag tank. I'm going to take corals like zoanthids, duncans, mushrooms, and chalices and kind of keep them on the outskirts where they really don't need the higher light levels. Because this is the first light adjustment I've made on this frag tank since I've had it up, I'm going to go ahead and check back here in a few weeks to kind of see if any coloration or growth has changed with the new light levels. Now, if I find that it's still a little darker or they're not growing the way they should be, I will go ahead and adjust the light higher. As you can see, I really don't have much higher to go, so if it comes down to it, I might have to add a second fixture and bring the fixtures closer to the surface area just to get a higher par output. And then, of course, with two fixtures, I'll be able to get that wider spread and I don't have to worry about losing so much par. I will say, at the end of the day, I enjoyed myself, uh, you know, testing the par levels, checking and making adjustments, and, and fine-tuning my frag tank to optimize the growth. Now, if you haven't uh, used one of these par meters or you're considering getting one, I definitely recommend it. Now, if you're just using it for par, you're going to save a lot of money going that route. Now, there are more accurate um, par meters out there, but if you want to get something that accurate, you're going to have to spend the money. And what I mean by that is a lot of these range from $400 to $2,000. And of course, with everything in this hobby, you generally get what you pay for. Now, the Sennai Reef might be off, you know, maybe, you know, 50 to 75 par. Who knows what it's actually going to be off of? Because I really, you know, I can't determine that. But I am getting a rough range, and that's what I'm looking for. Is I'm looking for that you know, estimated range, make adjustments based on that information, and then see how the coral react. At the end of the day, you have to see how your system reacts to your current lighting and nutrient levels and make adjustments from there. You can't just go all in and hope everything's going to work out. That's just not how reef tanks are. Now that I have adjusted the par levels within the frag tank, it's time to move over to the main display. Now that video will be out in the next week or two, so look forward to that. I'm going to give you a little heads up on how I'm going to go about it and explain why it's taking me a, a couple weeks to get it out. Now what I plan on doing is taking a still photo of the reef tank back a little bit, giving you the full view. Now my plan is to adjust the three SB reef lights uh, to 20% and then do a par reading from the top of the tank at different coral levels all the way down to the bottom and then adjust that percentage to 40, 60, 80, 100 and then finally adjusting it to where I like to keep it and, and check the par readings throughout. It doesn't sound like much but that's a lot of work. It's very time consuming because not only do I have to uh, you know, adjust the lighting but then I have to test 
all the measurements and then write those measurements down, then put them on the photo in a number form so it makes sense to you. So it's a little bit of work. So, uh, you know, don't hold your breath. It will be out in the next week or two, I promise. So look forward to that video. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. I appreciate you sticking around. But before I go, I want to give you a quick update on some subscriber contest giveaways. Now, I haven't done one in quite some time. I did plan on doing an Apex giveaway at 3000 but unfortunately, my attorney just didn't give me a go. Now, when it comes to financial transactions over the Internet, I need to make sure 100% that I'm covered and you are covered. And it just wasn't possible uh, given the cir circumstances that I'm currently in. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and do one at 4000 now, what am I going to give away? I don't know yet. I'm thinking I'm just going to have a list, maybe a reactor, or, you know, have some supplies on there, a gift card or whatever. And if you win, you can go ahead and select what you want from that list, and then I will go ahead and mail it to you. Now, uh, granted, if you are outside the United States, I won't be able to send you a reactor, but I could still do like a gift card and stuff like that. So it's going to still involve everybody on the channel. It just, depending on where you live in the world, will determine what you're able to select from. Either way, guys, I appreciate you sticking around. If you have any questions, let me know. As always, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.